Welcome to lesson 6-3, where we're going to learn how to represent percents that are greater than 100 or less than 1. Make sure your book is open to page 347, and follow along and make sure you write down everything that you find in the video. Our I can statement is being able to write percents that are greater than 100 or less than 1. But let's start off with our um, solve and discuss it. Here it says, Marcy, Bobby, and Max began their homework at the same time. Marcy finished her homework in 60 minutes. Bobby finished his homework in 50% of the time that it took Marcy to finish. So we're comparing um, Bobby's time to Marcy's time. And then we're told Max finished his homework in 150% of Marcy's time. So we're trying to figure out how long did each of them work? Well, remember, we know that Marcy worked for 60 minutes. And since we're comparing our other amounts to her, that means 60 minutes is our 100%. So let's put 60 minutes equals 100%. Next, let's take a look at Bobby. So for Bobby, uh, let's see. Bobby finished his homework in 50% of the time it took Marcy. So Bobby had 50% which is 50 out of 100. And remember, Marcy's time was that 100%, which was 60 minutes. So now we've got to figure out what was Bobby's time. It's not very easy to go from 100 to 60, but we could also think about going vertically here. What do you do to the number 100 to get 50? Well, you divide by two. And remember, whatever you do to one fraction, you have to do to the other. So let's take our 60 and divide it by two. And when we do that, 60 divided by two is 30. So Bobby worked for 30 minutes. Now let's check out um, Marcy. So Marcy, let's switch colors here. Marcy worked for 150% of the time. Well, 150% would be 150 out of 100 because percent's always out of 100. And remember, Marcy was 60 minutes. So again, just like we did with Bobby, let's think about what we do to 100 to get 150. So in this case, because our number's getting bigger, we're gonna multiply by 1.5. And if I do that up to that fraction, I have to do that over here. I'm gonna multiply by 1.5. And when I do that, let's see, 60 times 1.5, well, that's 90. So that must mean Marcy spent 90 minutes on homework. So it's this type of work that we're going to be dealing with, same type of strategy, when we go to our future problems. If you turn your book to page 348 and take a look at example one, we're going to learn how to take a percent that is greater than 100 and write it as both a fraction and as a decimal. Jan and Kim built model cars for a science project Kim, Kim's car traveled 140% as far as Jan's car. How can you write 140% as a fraction and as a decimal? Well, if we start with the fraction part, remember, percent means out of 100. So 140% would be 140 out of 100. And that is a fraction. But you should always, when writing a fraction, see if you can simplify it two lowest terms. Yes, this is improper, but because it is a ratio, do not change it to a mixed number. But let's see, 140 and 100 both end with a zero, so I know I can divide both of them by 10. And in doing so, I get, let's see, 140 divided by 10 is 14, 100 divided by 10 is 10. But wait a minute, 14 and 10 are both even, so that means I could divide both of them by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Since 7 and 5 have no common factors besides 1, that would be the lowest terms form of my fraction of 140%. But I could just leave it as this one to start with if I wanted to. Now let's see if we can do the same thing and write 140% as a decimal. Well, remember, when we have a percent, 140%, we can't see a decimal point in that, 
but technically that decimal point is right after the zero. And when we're going from decimal and percent conversions, if we're starting with a percent and we want to go to a decimal, we're going to move our decimal point to the left two times, always two times. So we take this and we go one, two, and we end up with the number 1.40. Make sure you drop the percent sign. You can also, if you want, drop that last zero. It's not completely necessary. So 140% in decimal form is 1.4 or 1.40. Now I'd like you to pause the video and do the try it at the bottom of the page. <laughs> then restart to check your work. So 225% in fraction form could be written as either 225 over 100, or you could simplify it to nine over four. In decimal form, just move the decimal point two spaces to the left. Remember, it starts on the right side of the five to get 2.25. If you have 175% and you wanna change it into, I'm sorry, 1.75, and you want to change it to a percent, move the decimal point two spaces to the right, or start by putting it over 100. It asks for an example, and here's mine. You can do a different one if you'd like. I said Mrs. Schroeder increases the size of her print on her e-reader to 175% so she can see it without her glasses. Next, let's take a look at example two on page 349, where we're gonna take a fraction percent less than one and write it as a fraction and as a decimal. One of my recommendations is that if you have a fraction percent, start by changing it into a decimal percent. A percent can be written with both fractions and decimals as long as it has a percent sign on it. So we have the fraction one half percent, which means if I have a hundredths grid, it's half of one square. So one half, remember to change a fraction into a decimal. I'm gonna take one and divide it by two, and I end up with a decimal 0 0.5. So this is actually 0.5%. Now I'm going to write that in fraction form. So remember percent is out of 100. So I take 100 on the bottom and put 0 0.5 on top but you are never allowed to leave a decimal inside of a fraction answer. So we have to get rid of that decimal. Well, my decimal point needs to move one space to the right in the numerator in order to change or to get rid of it. So that would require me to multiply by 10. When I multiply both a top and a bottom by 10, essentially I'm just moving my decimal point to the right one space. 0 0.5 times 10 is 5, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. So the fraction form of 1 half percent is 5 over 1,000. Or if you simplify that to lowest terms, you would get 1 over 200. That's dividing both numbers by 5. So we're going to do the same thing when we try to turn our fraction percent into a decimal mm. by first writing it as a decimal percent. Remember one divided by two is 0 0.5. So we have 0 0.5 percent. And then remember decimal percent. We have the percent form to go to decimal. We're going to move our decimal point two spaces to the left. So currently it is right here. We're going to take it and go one, two. So when I'm going to write my final answer, I have a decimal point I need a zero for this extra box here, a zero and a five. Since my decimal's on the far left, I need to put an extra zero in front of it. So I end up with 0 0.005 for my decimal form or either of these for my fraction forms. In example three, we have a decimal percent that is less than one. And again, to write it as a fraction and decimal, since it's already in decimal form, we're gonna use the same strategies as example two. So when we have 0.9%, that would be 0.9 out of 100. Then we need to move that decimal point to the right. So we multiply by 10. For each space to move it, you move it by a power of 10. So 10 or 100 if you need to move it two spaces. 
So now that I move it, multiply by 10, I get 9 over 1,000. And that cannot be simplified, so that is my fraction answer. Now to write our percent as a decimal, we start with the percent form, 0.9%. And remember, because we're going from percent to decimal, we're going to have to take that decimal point and go two spaces left. One, two. And if necessary, you would fill in an extra zero. So we're going to end up with the number 0 0.009. Always put an extra zero in front of decimal points so that we can actually see it. And that would be turning my percent into a decimal. Pause the video and complete the try it at the bottom of page 349 and then restart to check your work. Two fifths percent changed into decimal form is 0.4 percent. That's the same as 0.4 over 100. Always get rid of the decimal in the numerator, so that means we have to multiply the top and bottom by 10. That gets us 4 over 1,000. If you like, you can simplify that fraction by dividing top and bottom by 4 to get 1 over 250. Either of our fraction forms are acceptable. If I have four one thousandths, the four has to go in the third decimal place to the right of the decimal point. Three tenths percent or 0 0.3 percent is the same as 0 0.3 over 100. Again, multiply by 10, you get three over a thousand. And that would be the same as three one thousandths in decimal form. Let's summarize our lesson on page 350 with our key concept. You can express percents that are greater than 100 or less than 1 in equivalent forms of fractions and decimals. Remember our decimal to percent conversions? If you have the percent, you can turn it into a decimal by moving your decimal point two spaces left. Or you could always go the other way, decimal to percent, two spaces every time. Enter that information into your book to remind you. Also, when going from a fraction percent, start by turning it into a decimal. Remember to do from fraction to decimal, we're going to divide top divided by bottom. Squeeze that in there if you can. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video and see if you can try numbers five through seven on the do you know how. Then restart to check your work. Remember, percent to decimal is two spaces left. On number six, first you need to change your fraction percent into a decimal percent by dividing three by 10. Then use your place values to turn your decimals into fractions.